large industries from design, cloud AI to scientific computing. But it is the gamers and their insatiable demand that is the driving force of the GPU. Pulling their GPUs to create the largest distributed computer ever. A million gamers united to counter-strike the COVID-19 coronavirus. The result was 2.8 exaflops. Five times the processing power of the world's largest supercomputer to simulate the virus. That looks like a nightmare balloon. Holding at I'm home was able say to it. simulate 100 milliseconds, <laughs> a tenth of a second in the life of the coronavirus, a folding, and like, captured a moment it opens its mouth yeah, folding to infect nightmares, the human cell. <laughs> Scientists believe this is also its moment of weakness. Thank you all for joining this historic fight. We're going to talk about computer graphics and the work we're doing to push the boundaries. We love computer graphics and have advanced it incredibly in the time of NVIDIA. As the technology advanced, the expressiveness of the medium has made graphics an invaluable tool to help us understand our world, create and explore new worlds, tell stories that inspire us. From science to industry to the arts, computer graphics has made a profound impact on the world. And for that, we are privileged to have contributed. We're gonna talk about gaming and mm. the infinite ways that gaming is expanding. GeForce PC gaming is large and thriving. It's open Showing and a rapidly 20 series advancing in technology front of all that. combined with the amazing creativity I of the community. I recognize that video, the content creation video. Anyone That's the pros uh, when you go Dark Souls Add with your friends and your or your personal mates. Broadcast <laughs> pros stream their practices. Experts stream tips and tricks. Friends stream to friends just to hang out. There are over 20 million streamers. Mm -hmm. Games have become a new art medium. In Minecraft, gamers can build their work of art. Machinima artists create cinematics made from games. So this assets. is giving me a little bit of Tens hope that we'll hear something about the new NV encode. Inside a computer simulation, any sport can become eSport. Virtual NASCAR and F1 are already attracting top racers. They like have sports, to do something about that because the if they don't, it's and the, the agony of defeat and the human drama of athletic What else are you going to eSports is they on do way differently from last sport. time? <laughs> I have something special for all the GeForce gamers around the world. Four gifts. I hope you like them and you'll find new ways to game. First, big news. Fortnite is turning RTX on. Now Minecraft and Fortnite, the number one and number two most played games in the world, Too easy. RTX on. Fortnite will get ray trace shadows, <laughs> reflections, ambient occlusion, and DLSS Too 2. Obvious. These Do effects it. look fantastic with the art style of Fortnite. I can't wait to see a Fortnite concert with RTX on. The last one with Travis Scott was watched by 28 million people. That's real. Epic I know that's trailer real. for you. Let's mm -hmm. play it now. Let's go. And let's advertise for Fortnite because uh, fuck you. That's why. <laughs> um, coming soon, not to an iDevice near you. <laughs> you cannot play it on iPhone. <laughs> Esports gamers play esports. Esports is a game of milliseconds. Reaction time is a combination of the gamer and the machine. Let me explain. This is Valorant. In this example, the opponent is traveling at 1500 pixels per second, and it's visible in this opening for only 180 milliseconds. A typical gamer has a reaction time of 150 milliseconds from photon to action. You can only hit this opponent if your PC adds less than 30 milliseconds. Most gamers have latencies far greater than 30 milliseconds, many up to 100 milliseconds. Ooh. Today, we're announcing a new esports technology called NVIDIA <laughs> Reflex. NVIDIA Reflex optimizes the rendering pipeline across CPU and GPU to reduce latency by up to 50%. In September, we're releasing Reflex with our game-ready driver. Over 100 million GeForce gamers will instantly become more competitive. Valorant, Fortnite, Apex Legends, Call of Duty Warzone, and Destiny 2 will be the first to integrate Reflex technology. Esports pros and enthusiasts strive for zero latency. Didn't AMD for have something for a minute? An like, this is all our, um... Yeah, display. A the, um... G-Sync display designed for esports. This I don't display remember what it was called, but yeah, they, they had something analog. designed specifically Just to reduce, like, mouse. input latency and a uh, bunch of other stuff. The NVIDIA esports displays <laughs> are arriving this fall from Acer, Alienware, Asus, 360 hertz. We've That's made too a many video hertz. comparing gaming technology has gone hertz, too far. <laughs> 144 hertz and 360 hertz display. You can see immediately how 360 hertz display. That's will right, Rosario. None of that peasant 144. 
<laughs> for the 20 million live streamers, we have something really There's what, cool one uh, monitor out there that can do 360? Into a broadcast one studio. dude. <laughs> one of the <laughs> things I love right now AI is uh, people who have just been like, oh, 144, man. I don't understand how you do with the 60. They just immediately went, 144 is good enough, man. You don't need 360. <laughs> And webcam 380. auto framing that totally a just happened. Camera person tracking you. Prepare yourself. These AI effects are amazing. Available for download in September and runs on any RTX GPU. NVIDIA broadcast. Brandon and GeForce Marketing will the, now show that you that thing that's NVIDIA not coming broadcast. to Linux. Yes. Hey oh, you mean like new NV encode? I'm very excited today to talk to you about our <laughs> new NV encode shadow app. play. Like many of you, I've been home a lot more lately. I've been video conferencing all day and then gaming and streaming all night. And I have a very basic webcam and microphone setup. And you're also not NVIDIA talking to that RE20. Supercharged with a lot of new awesome features. You got a boom mic over really you, buddy. Bring it out using the power of AI and our Am I not supposed to know that? Uh, the first one I want to talk about is noise removal. Because <laughs> so I do. I asked my girlfriend to join me with a blow dryer here. Ah, uh, that, that could have went different. That sound makes it very hard to understand what I'm saying. But when I turn on noise removal in NVIDIA broadcast, you find that it's completely gone. And that, that, that blow dryer is still going. Uh -huh. But NVIDIA Broadcast isn't just awesome audio features. There's some really exciting video <laughs> features as well. Let's take a look. First up, we have the ability to blow your background, which you may notice that I need because I have a very cluttered and messy room. Did you just say blow when your I background? When I turn this background blur feature on, <laughs> blur. I'm blur. All of a sudden I get this really classy effect. Get your mind out of the gutter, man. From low to high and everything in between. Or if I want, I can actually replace the background altogether. Now I'm in a space station with the magic of AI. <laughs> it's that easy. Mm -hmm. Or if I want to jump uh -huh. into gameplay, I can remove the background altogether. <laughs> now, Pedro, I want you to buy a front address microphone, set it I'm below you, and talk straight effect, over it. Without actually having to have one at home. He changed microphones good, when he like turned the thing on. He changed microphones. It, it, it sounds completely different. Yeah, it's the same thing. That's an RE20. That's an Electro voice, by the way, if you're wondering. The He's also not talking into the, the microphone. Is I bounce around so much, it's easy for my head to get out of frame. With the auto frame... Uh, yeah, no, the moment he went yeah. down, he would have gone. Yeah. <laughs> His voice would have been gone. It's like having your own personal <laughs> camera. Here's an example of what happens when you get off the so, um, front of a microphone like that. Also talking across it. And show it to everybody. It's like me it talking this every way. Step of the way. Mm -hmm. AT twenty twenty. I just find NVIDIA broadcast to be really exciting, as both a streamer <laughs> and someone who works from home. The ability to remove distracting noise, improve your background, and keep yourself in the center. Of the the only place. reason it bugs me is awesome because somebody said, "Okay, you gotta have this in the shot." For you guys to try it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A new form of art has emerged from gaming <clears throat> called machinima. Artists are using game assets to create cinematics. Brand new, There's ladies and gentlemen. Tens of billions <laughs> of views on YouTube. <laughs> Most are shorts. Brand new. Some are even recreating two thousand classic movies. It's becoming oh, a whole Jim. new art genre. <laughs> Jim's also streaming Today, the NVIDIA thing. I'll show you an app that will make these cinematics amazing. <laughs> it's called NVIDIA Omniverse Machinima. It's an app built on our Omniverse 3D workflow collaboration platform. Omniverse is a universal design tool asset no, Jill. exchange. Machinima is brand new. Didn't you hear Jensen? The engine is designed to be physically Personally, I think it was a leather like jacket. The early 3D, light, like early 3D games, everyone's been we making Machinima off of that. Yeah, tools. and it's also been <laughs> called Machinima. Maya, Photoshop, <laughs> yeah. Epic Unreal, Rhino, and many more. The Machinima app brings in elements and assets from games and third-party collections like Turbo Squid and lets you mix and compose them into a cinematic. Creators can use their webcam to drive our AI-based post estimator. Yeah, that's what it's going to be used for. Yeah. Drive face animation mm -hmm. AI uh -huh. with your voice. Mm -hmm. Add high fidelity <laughs> physics like particles and fluids. <laughs> Make materials physically accurate. And then when done with your composition and mixing, render film quality cinematics with your RTX GPU. NVIDIA Omniverse Machinima. Beta in October. Okay. Sign up at NVIDIA. So 24 frames a second, machinima. heavily compressed. Let me show you the display on the theater. <laughs> we started with assets from Mountain Blade 2, Banner Lord. You're going to love this. It's called Mountain Blade. It's, it's a giant mountain with a blade. Very dangerous. Brown. <laughs> well, it's more yellow than brown, but yeah. It's serious set. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Yeah, it's a video game. I'm not going to say anything about the trebuchet physics. Nope. Jet propelled <laughs> trebuchets. <laughs> the arc angle looks up. Again, let me be quiet. These guys are getting better. <laughs> Mm 
Okay. Yes. For 40 years, since NVIDIA researcher Turner <laughs> Witted first published his paper on ray tracing, computer science researchers have chased this dream to create super realistic virtual worlds with real time ray tracing. NVIDIA, seeing the ultimate limits of rasterization approaching, focused intense efforts over the past 10 years to realize real time ray tracing on a large scale. That is a very nice render. At yes. SIGGRAPH two years ago, mm -hmm. we announced the NVIDIA RTX. Now, two years later, it is clear we have reinvented computer graphics. Um... NVIDIA RTX is a full stack invention. <laughs> RTX starts with a brand new GPU architecture, but it is so much what? more. You're not great to say that it just it works anymore. Engine tech and a bunch <laughs> no, of no, here's the big I, I said this. <laughs> I stand by it. Run. RTX All ray tracing. That's neat, but if. If it's the product that you're going to lead with, it shouldn't be something that, no, it's on here. Look at this, 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 and this. You can tell if you look close enough. Like, uh, I don't know. Thousands of research papers of new rendering and AI algorithms enabled by RTX. The RTX GPU has three fundamental processors. The programmable shader that we first introduced over 15 years ago, RT core to accelerate the ray triangle and ray bounding box intersections, and AI processing pipeline called tensor core. Tensor Core accelerates linear algebra that is used for deep neural network processing, the foundation of modern AI. Yes, I too can AI solve a matrix. AI is the most powerful technology force of our time. <laughs> Computers that learn from data That's and not impressive, software. right? Strangely, I use the, the Tensor Cores on Linux. Short breath <laughs> NVIDIA is doing groundbreaking work in this area. You might have seen our work in self-driving cars. I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I use them for noise reduction. Will also be revolutionized by deep <laughs> yeah. Let me show you some recent works and the art of the possible. <laughs> The first video is a generative adversarial network that has learned to synthesize virtual characters of any artistic genre, including photorealistic. Oh, I look forward to waking up and Second screaming. Second is a neural network that, that um... animates a 3D face directly from voice. You require more Vespine gas. Uh... It's dangerous to go alone. Take this. The AI character can speak in any language, be any gender, and even rap in That will not be abused in any way. Third is a nope. character locomotion of infinite number of positions. Imagine negotiating arbitrary paths and obstacles. The fourth is reconstructing 3D from video. Imagine the possibilities. Record video, interact in 3D. Deep fakes. That's deep a fake. fakes. This one is a deep learning model that learned the physics behavior of cloth animation. Why, why do you got to have a model in a moo moo Finally, in video? What's up, model? Ray tracing can predict Two. colors of missing Two. pixels so that fewer rays need to be cast and fewer pixels need to be fully rendered we can achieve orders of magnitude speedups. AI is certain to play a giant role in the future of computer graphics and gaming. The powerful tensor cores So what do we have? RTX we have nightmares, nightmares, walking, building. bird nightmares, moo One of the first major static. AI computer graphics breakthroughs is DLSS. <laughs> you can Here's actively introduce static. Real-time ray tracing is far more beautiful <laughs> Ray tracing really is the future. <laughs> per pixel than rasterization. So the solution is to ray trace fewer pixels and use AI on tensor cores to up res, to super res, to a higher resolution and boost frame rate. D -L DLSS took nearly two years of intensive research. We built a supercomputer to train the network. We almost have it working. The DLSS kind model of. is trained on extremely <laughs> Yeah, version two is almost usable. <laughs> offline rendered images of many kinds of content. Once trained, the model is downloaded into your driver. At runtime, DLSS 2.0 takes in low resolution, I remember alias this image commercial. and motion vector of the current frame, mm -hmm. and the high resolution <laughs> previous frame to generate a high resolution current frame. I think DLSS is one of our biggest breakthroughs in the last 10 years. Take a look at these images of Death Stranding, the latest game by Kojima-san. Yeah, DLSS no, in a stream, no one's going to be able to tell the difference. And create a detail from AI <laughs> that native rendering didn't even show. And the frame rate is higher. Reviewers have it loved it. DLSS, shows. so it's just good, it just The quality of detail native rendering and runs even faster. <laughs> You can play at 4K without a performance hit. Tensor You're welcome to take that chance. To your face. Yeah. <laughs> you can use that in your marketing. Let's look at one frame trace of a game to see the processors of RTX in action. Adding ray tracing to games dramatically increases the computation workload. Using shaders to do ray traversal and object intersection reduces the frame rate. We added the RT core, which reduces shader workload by 60%. RT core offloads the and shaders it still reduces by doing the, the ray rate. triangle and ray bounding mm -hmm. box intersection calculations. Using the same methodology as Microsoft Xbox, the RT core is effectively a 34 teraflop shader. 
and Turing has an equivalent of 45 teraflops while ray tracing. Even with RT core, the amount of time consumed is significant. You're not AMD, you so don't RT get to throw a teraflops around. <laughs> have to run concurrently. Even then, 20 milliseconds is only 50 frames per second, and still a step back in performance relative to previous generations. This is where the Tensor Core and DLSS come in. Rendering to a lower resolution, then using AI and super fast Tensor Core to effectively double frame rate. Now you can get ray tracing, get high resolution, and high frame rate at the same time. That's the magic of the three processors of RTX. Turing was our first generation RTX GPU. So you'll be able to get 50 FPS out of no. Quake 2? <laughs> what I'm thinking about this is, and have you made this an option in teraflops. Unreal and Unity as a checkbox? RT teraflops and 89 <laughs> tensor teraflops. No. <laughs> Let me show you our new RTX GPU. I don't think Epic Empire wants to pay NVIDIA. In fact, Epic's been very much Empire against paying other companies. <laughs> clock versus one on Turing. 30 shader teraflops compared to 11. Ampere doubles ray triangle intersection throughput. Ampere's RT core delivers 58 RT teraflops compared to Turing's 34. And Ampere's new tensor core automatically identifies and removes less important DNA weights. And the new tensor core hardware processes the sparse network at twice long the rate tensor of Turing. Is long. 238 <laughs> tensor flops compared to 89. Tensor flops? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, NVIDIA's new Ampere GPU. Tensor flops. Second generation <laughs> tensor RTX. Flop. 28 billion transistors built on Samsung 8N NVIDIA custom process. All three processors double rates over Turing, a triple double. It connects to Micron's new G6X, the fastest memories ever made. A triple double sounds like something you get at five guys. Transistor performance scaling mm -hmm. is over. Yet Ampere is an incredible two or it's times in the secret the menu at Burger King. Energy efficiency yeah. of Turing. At NVIDIA, we use every engineering lever to squeeze every drop of performance out of the system. From architecture, custom process design, circuit design. Did you ever design, not say customers at the end of that almost, sentence? Custom service yeah, they IO, almost memory, claim like 2x design, performance design, per watt. This like, okay, so we're going to have 75 watt generation. graphics cards that Billions can... Of dollars. Oh, I don't know, match my 1080. I'm more impressed by the 4x3 <laughs> monitors. The hallmark of our GPUs. <laughs> our performance... Energy efficiency yeah, no, clearly those profits and low don't power make it to uh, world class. the assembly line. And real application performance highlights <laughs> Ampere's new RT core. The more ray tracing is done, the greater the Ampere speed up. Ampere RT core doubles ray intersection processing. Its ray tracing is processed concurrently with shading. And Ampere can render cinematic images with motion blur eight times faster than Turing. Let's take a look at Ampere in action. Okay. At our Kitchen GTC a few months ago, we showed Marbles, the world's first fully path-traced, photorealistic, real-time graphics. It was mm -hmm. running on our highest-end Turing no computer. RTX 8000. Yeah, <laughs> no computer could possibly hope to run it. 25 frames per second. Today, we're going to run an enhanced version of Marbles with even more special effects. And it is running at 1440p, <laughs> Lens 30 flare. frames per second. I don't know, man. I need to know how many tensor flops it's running at. I can't make a... Ladies and gentlemen... Enjoy marbles at night. Oh, they're going to put in more light sources. Okay. Dude, shut up. I've got to see the tensor flops. <laughs> Intellectually, I understand I'm supposed to be impressed, but... Yeah, no, you can do that without ray tracing very easily, and I'm pretty sure even a GTX 1050 could run it without ray tracing. No. But... No, it can. <laughs> Maybe not at 4K, but... This is 1440. <laughs> See, you, you can definitely tell, like, uh, the extra tensor flop in that blue marble. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were being serious or not. <laughs> Neither am I. I get that I'm supposed to be impressed. What I'm saying is I'm not smart enough to be impressed. Marbles is entirely path traced. 
no rasterization, all real time. I mean, you say that, but I honestly can't tell either. There are hundreds of area lights, including spherical area lights. There's no pre baking, everything is dynamic. The depth of field is film quality and beautiful. And completely unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Everything is dynamic. Diffuse GI, all dynamic. There are hundreds what of I really drugs. think is Angel somebody had a under the table bet of how many carcinogens they could pack into this demo. In real time. <laughs> Even the candles will give you cancer if you look at them wrong. The LSS 2.0 <laughs> is doing the super resolution and AI denoising. What are the marbles made of? Radium. <laughs> Oh, uh, there's a Jensen head. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's a Jensen head. It's made of strontium. Let's compare Marble's Turing and Marble's Ampere. You can see dramatic visual quality jump of Thank Ampere. you. Marble's on Turing runs at 720p, 25 frames per second. Marble's on Ampere runs at 1440p, 30 frames per second. More than four times the performance. And Ampere even did area lights and depth of field. A giant performance leap. Today's games are giant oh, hey, worlds. So 50 FPS and quick to RTX. photogrammetry, yeah. dense geometry, and lots of characters. <laughs> games are over 200 gigabytes and getting bigger. This is like 50,000 songs or 400 hours of streaming video. Games have pushed PC, IO, and file systems to the breaking point. CPUs copy files from disk and decompress the game image. This is fine when the storage system was slow, 50 to 100 megabytes per second. Now with Gen 4 PCI Express and solid state drives, PCs can transfer data at seven gigabytes per second, a hundred times faster. CPU copying data to memory and decompressing game images is now the bottleneck. Decompressing data from 100 megabytes per second hard drives takes only a few CPU That's cores. That's a bold clay. <laughs> However, decompressing from seven gigabytes per second SSDs on PCIe Gen 4 takes over 20 CPU cores. Mm -hmm. Today, we're announcing NVIDIA RTX IO with three new advances. New IO APIs for fast loading and streaming directly from SSD to GPU memory. GPU lossless decompression. And collaboration with Microsoft on direct storage for Windows that streamlines the transfer of data from storage to GPU memory. With NVIDIA RTX IO, oh, so, vast yeah. worlds uh, will load Something instantly. else that's not coming to Linux. Picking up gotcha. where you left off will be instant. Mm -hmm. This is a very big deal for next generation gaming. Let me show you Ampere in action in one of the most anticipated games of 2020. CD Projekt Red Cyberpunk. This trailer is called oh, someone else who hates Linux. RTX. <laughs> it shows ray trace reflections, diffuse illumination, shadows, ambient occlusion, and DLSS 2.0. It's got a bowl full of spatulas, yeah. <laughs> hey man, it's an easy way to bake a cake. <laughs> but if the way is hazy, you gotta do the cooking by the book. <laughs> you know you can't be lazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, that looks like cyberpunk. It's all yellow and blue and pink. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> that look very uh, like the animation of the pistol look very bioshocky <laughs> ladies and gentlemen our new flagship gpu the nvidia geforce <laughs> rtx 3080 segway powered by ampere like a brick second wall. generation rtx architecture no. okay actual gpu yay <laughs> <laughs> There it is. Oh. <laughs> Nvidia, I thought you were going to go... PCB. <laughs> Dude, I thought they were going to go retro. <laughs> Just a green PCB. I had a 980. I did not hesitate. I have one of them. Yeah. Well, it's the gigabyte version, but yeah. <laughs> you got a 2060. It looks like that, but it's smaller. Yeah. Uh -huh. Billion transistors. 
1.9x performance per watt. I yeah, I'll have to wait for the reviews on that one. 760 gigabytes per second. 6x. We made memory do things that's unnatural. That's all marketing BS. Tensor flops. <laughs> Tensor flops. <laughs> that, more marketing BS. RT flops, baby. Come on. <laughs> the R flops. That's a floppy sandwich. Watch it. There we go. Dual axis. Yes. Flow through. Yay. One comes out the uh, the back of the case. The other one goes up into the radiator of or the um, the heatsink of the CPU. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. interesting. That's like mm -hmm. engineering wise. I'm like, okay. Is the PCB going to be jagged like that on all the cards? <laughs> I just remember the uh, delightful little meltdown you had in Discord. Me like, oh, that's uh, couldn't they would never do that. It's so ugly. I hate it. Ah. I didn't say they would never do that. It's like that looks fugly. It's like that better be a prototype. <laughs> and it does. <laughs> the Nvidia RTX 3080. I have one. Okay, right so we know that that you. particular cooler is also on the 3080. It's in been it's in the room the whole it time. Is beautiful. Look at this. You weren't looking the behind the spatulas, Arthur. <laughs> it is wonderfully crafted. It's going to look beautiful in your PC. And it lights up. Oh, no. It's... Now let me tell you about some of the other exciting technologies inside. And it lights up. We're just going to leave it at that. Turing used G6, <laughs> the fastest memories at that time. The industry thought that was the limit. For Ampere, we had to push through that limit. Working with Micron, we designed the world's first memories with PAM4 signal. Micron memory? Pulse amplitude <laughs> modulation. With four voltage levels that encode two bits of data each. 00011011. Each voltage step is only 250 millivolts. So in the same period of time, G6X can transmit twice as much data as G6. PAM4 is extreme signaling technology, and it's just becoming used in high-speed networking. The Ampere thermal architecture is the first ever flow through design, working harmoniously with PC chassis cooling system, pulling in cool <laughs> air from the outside, flowing through the GPU, through and the pushing CPU hot air straight tank. out the chassis. Listen, man. To allow room for a fan to flow air directly <laughs> through the module, our engineers architect a super dense PCB design that is 50% smaller than previous, while Hell adding no, the bigger Ampere look floppy. GPUs, HDMI 2.1, PCI Express 4.0, and G6X. There are two independently okay, controlled to fans. To be fair, that back fan, fan uh, doesn't have cool a lot the and pushes the to cool heated air out. So it's not going to bring in a lot of heat the from the GPU into the CPU cool heat sink. The of the heat pipe and directs the hot air to the top and because back there's of just the a hole there to be exhausted by the system <laughs> fan. Well, and the, the heat pipe. The 3080 <laughs> flow through system is three times quieter and keeps the GPU 20 degrees cooler than the Turing design. It can cool 90 watts more than Turing. The generational leap is ultimately the most important factor that's, of new GPUs. That's very neat as long as the um, Ampere is not 90 watts higher than Turing. Next level of content yes. <laughs> for the install base to upgrade. Let's see how the 3080 stacks up the previous generation architectures on the latest graphics intensive games. Relative 3080 to, is okay. faster than 2080 <laughs> Ti. 3080 is twice the performance of 2080. 700 bucks the then, price. huh? Ampere mm -hmm. is the biggest generational leap we've ever had. Ladies and okay, gentlemen, so maybe that 3070 might be NVIDIA GeForce agreeable. RTX 3080, <laughs> our new flagship GPU, powered by Ampere, our second generation RTX GPU architecture. Terrafloppy is hell. Incredible amounts of processing <laughs> in the shader, RT ray it's tracing tensor core, floppy. and tensor <laughs> it's flops has AI. flops. 10 gigabytes of G6X, Ooh. twice the processing power of 2080. And at the same price, starting at six ninety nine, hmm. available September seventeenth. Hmm. One of our most popular GPUs is the seventy okay, series. Nine seventy, ten seventy, twenty seventy. We're all proving me wrong, popular. are we? You're gonna <laughs> love the new RTX thirty seventy, faster Ooh. than the twenty eighty Ti. The Turing enthusiast GPU priced uh -huh. at twelve hundred dollars. Ladies and gentlemen, the new GeForce RTX thirty seventy. Let me show it to you. Uh, you should have uh, hit it it's behind the pepper. Part. 20 shader teraflops. <laughs> 40 RT teraflops. 
This all comes down to memory. It all comes down to memory. AI processing. If it's eight gigs, <laughs> it's ah, boo. RTX 3070 <laughs> is faster than the twelve hundred dollar RTX 2080 Ti, starting at four ninety nine, available in October. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Every generation, we pack in our best ideas to increase performance yeah. while introducing new features that enhance image quality. Every couple of generations, the stars align, as it did with Pascal, and we get a giant generational leap. Pascal was known as the perfect 10. Pascal was a huge success and set a very high bar. It took the super family yes. of Turing to meaningfully exceed <laughs> yes, Pascal was. on game performances without ray tracing. With ray tracing turned on, Pascal, using programmable shaders to compute ray triangle <laughs> intersections, fell far behind Turing's RT core. And Turing, with ray tracing on, reached the same performance as Pascal, with ray tracing off. On a technical basis, this was a huge achievement. The images okay, are far a little bit of a self-awareness the there. and shadow artifacts are Very good. <laughs> but gamers want it more. They want every generation to be more realistic and higher frame rate at the same time. So we double down on everything. Twice the shader, twice the ray tracing, and twice the tensor core. The triple double. And twice Ampere the... Ampere knocks wait. the daylights out of Pascal on ray tracing. <laughs> and even with ray tracing on, crushes Pascal on frame rate. To all my Pascal gamer friends, it is safe to Give upgrade Give me now. your money. Amazing yeah, ray tracing it's, games it's are It's expensive, coming. though. Activision and developer <laughs> Treyarch are launching a new Call of Duty on November 13th. It's a masterpiece and it looks incredible. There are dynamic lights, ray tracing, shadows and ambient occlusion, DLSS 2.0, and NVIDIA Reflex super low latency technology. The last Call of Duty sold an amazing 30 million copies. Activision put together this trailer of never before seen footage. Enjoy. <laughs> okay, the only way you're gonna sell me on the 3070 is if you make with the NV encode. Like I'm gonna need some shocking if, if that's available. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know it's gonna be available, but I don't know if they've done an update. If they haven't done any significant update to it, I'm like, man. Eh. It's probably the same. Eh, then again. <laughs> yeah, eight gigs. Ugh. That that's fine. That that, that uh, keeping the exact same, you know, memory buffer, but going from. 1080 like performance I'm sorry, to 2080 like I, I, I performance. I apologize, everyone. I, I believe the peasant said something. What was that, Pedro? <laughs> I already have an 8 gigabyte video card. <laughs> I don't. I, I want 12? Really? I want 16. I'd be happy with 12. Several years ago, we started building the Titan, pushing the GPU Here to the absolute limit to create Here's the, the big best boy. graphics card of that generation. <laughs> It was built in limited quantities only through NVIDIA. The distribution was limited. The demand surprised us. Creatives were making 4K movies, rendering cinematics. Researchers built workstations for data science and AI. Bloggers built broadcast workstations. Flight and racing simulation fans built sim rigs. There is clearly a need. And data for scientists started GPU using them for research, so we disabled NVIDIA. Link. So we made a giant ampere. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the RTX 3090. People were using our cards uh, to run virtual machines, so we stopped them from doing that. Here's the Alrighty. ultra mega chunky. 3090 is Triple a beast. slot. A ferocious <laughs> GPU. A BF GPU. 36 a BF GPU. shader teraflops. 69 RT teraflops. 285 tensor teraflops. And it comes teraflops. with a massive 24 teraflops. gigabytes of G6X. It comes with a silencer. A three slot dual axle flow through design, <laughs> 10 times quieter and keeps the GPU. I really wanted that to be like a screw on silent design. Just NVIDIA branded. The 3090 is so big that for the very first time, we can play games at 60 frames per second in 8K. This is insane. Bold claim? Because it's impossible for us to show you what it looks like on the stream, we invited some friends to check it out. Roll the clip. That's what the silencers are for, just in case they said anything. <laughs> oh, what's that? You don't agree? <laughs> Say it's brilliant. <laughs> I've never been more excited to do anything. 8K60. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh my god. 
I thought we were talking smack about like um like 380. Incredible, dude. This is amazing. The resolution on this is silly. My God, you can see wear and tear on the treads. Look at this. Why is it so detailed? Alright, 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 alright. Move fast and shoot things. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Why is it that gaming conferences always have the fake reactions? I. Listen, I play video games. We do it on the stream. I can't act. Neither can they. Looking across the vistas, the grand vistas that are happening right now. Holy sh! Look at this. It's like okay, oh, two of those are land. Twitch streamers. Oh, so I, I don't know, Pedro. They just got kind of edgy here. I heard a beep. <laughs> two beeps. <laughs> They're probably all Twitch streamers. I just only recognize two of them. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know their names. I just I know the faces. <laughs> wow. It's been 20 years since the Nvidia GPU introduced programmable shading. The GPU revolutionized modern computer graphics. Developers jumped on and invented clever algorithms, like shaders that simulate realistic materials, or post-processing effects for soft shadows, ambient occlusion, and reflections. Developers pushed the limits of rasterization beyond anyone's expectations. Meanwhile, NVIDIA GPU processing increased a stunning 100,000-fold. Gaming became a powerful technology driver. Gamers grew to billions, and gaming pushed into all aspects of entertainment and culture. If the last 20 years was amazing, the next 20 will seem nothing short of science fiction. Uh -huh. Today's Ampere launch is a giant step into the future. This is our greatest generational leap ever. The second generation NVIDIA Assuming RTS, those claims stand up fusing to, uh, programmable scrutiny. shading, ray tracing, and artificial intelligence, gives us photorealistic graphics and the highest frame rates at the same time. Once the holy grail of computer graphics, ray tracing is now the standard. And Ampere is gonna bring you joy beyond gaming. NVIDIA Reflex to improve your response time. NVIDIA Broadcast turns any room into a studio. And Omniverse Machinima turns you into an animated filmmaker. We are super pleased with 3070, 3080, and 3090, the first three members of the Ampere generation. You're going to feel a boost like never before. I can't wait to go forward 20 years to see what RTX started. Homes will have holodecks. We will beam ourselves through time and space, Good. traveling at Good. the speed you, of light. You, you basically just admitted that your leather jacket gives future, you eternal life, Jensen. You probably should have said that <laughs> on air. <laughs> I'm not going to say I'll be here 20 years future, from now, but I will realize, totally be here 20 years from now because I know so. Thank you for joining us today. <laughs> And to all of our fans for celebrating the arrival of Ampere. Give us your money. <laughs>